Okay, well the task that we've set ourselves for today is another one of those that's gonna be slightly stress inducing because it's gonna involve the engine hoist, a heavy old engine block, some carts with wheels under them. We're gonna implement a drop cloth and some more straps. So um, if you are wondering where we're going with this, well, don't go anywhere and give me just a second and I'll explain. Okay, so I'll explain. I think I mentioned that I talked to the guys at S&J Engines, just emailed them, and I said, okay, what do I have to do to send this block back to you? And they said, the trucking company won't take it unless it's in the box wrapped in plastic, hence the drop cloth, and it's gotta be strapped down again, hence the cheapo Husky straps from Home Depot here. I'm just gonna use two of these. They're 14 foot long or 12 feet long by one inch. I think that's plenty of length to go around, down through the pallet and so forth and get them strapped down and get this thing ready to go. So my goal is I gotta move some stuff around, of course, that's always the first step whenever I start anything out here. I'm gonna wheel that old engine out here on the cart, lift it out of the box temporarily, wrap it in some plastic, put it back in the box, put those straps around, get it all strapped down, then I'm call those boys at S&J and say, come and get this thing. Then I'll have 454 pounds of iron gone from the garage, plus that big box, which is taking up quite a bit of space. So it ought to be interesting. Let's just dive in and see how it goes, shall we? All right, well, I know it looks like maybe we're getting ready to bury a body here, but, and this might be a little bit of overkill, but that worked okay. So what I'm gonna do now is fold my plastic all the way over. I got my straps down underneath the pallet. I'm just gonna tighten them up, cinch this baby down, and it's ready to call the truck, have them come get it. So I am gonna go anywhere when we get done with it. So there you go. I mean, it was like $5 for the drop cloth, and then those, those were the cheapest straps they had at Home Depot. They're 500 pounds each. So we've got two of them on there. That's a thousand pounds worth of lifting or holding on a 500 pound block. So I think it'll be okay. So we'll strap it up and I'll show you one last view just before I close the top up and seal the casket here. All right, well, it's a Saturday morning. It's raining and a little bit of thunder and lightning outside, so it's gonna be an indoor in the garage day, I think. And um, where I'm at is I'm gonna work on, continue on the transmission and transfer case today. Transfer case needs some more primer and then put that little pan back on it and kinda of, then I should be at the point where I should be able to bolt it back to the transmission. Now I've got myself a little witch's brew going over here. What I did is I filled this up with some parts cleaning water and the solution that mixes in there. I threw all the bolts in there for like all the bolts that go around this little pan and the bolts that hook the transmission transfer case back together. So I'll clean all those up and then up here on the floor, I've got the transmission and transfer case and bell housing. Those could start to go in some fashion back together. I have ordered my clutch. It's not here yet. And uh, the motor, the core motor, is ready to go back. I've talked to the guys at S&J. They've sent me all the paperwork to have it shipped back to them. And we've got the USF right away, guys. With, like, the pickup order, they haven't called me yet to let me know when they're going to come get this. So I'm predicting it will. they'll call me at the worst possible time. And I'll have to stop what I'm doing at the office and run home and get this thing on the truck for them. But that's out of here pretty soon next week I would expect Monday or Tuesday so yeah it's gonna be just a kind of a again like I said a, probably an indoor day while it's thunder and lightning and all that kind of stuff out there and um, if it calms down I may back the car out so I got a little bit more room to work but that's what we're gonna work on today so I'll bring you along with me and let you see how it goes
All right, well, we're going to explain how things work for a minute. So if you're already intimately familiar with the workings of transmissions and transfer case, then you might want to skip ahead. But if, like me, you're kind of fascinated by how stuff works, let's just have a look at this. So this is the input shaft of the transmission. This is what, by way of the clutch, connects to the crankshaft of the motor. Okay, so the motor's turning this shaft and the output side of it is turning these two gears. Now these gears are fixed together so they can't change from each other. And right now we've got a pretty common ratio like for one turn of the transfer or the input shaft, we're getting a full turn of the output shaft. But through the magic of transmissions, we can shift gears and bring the ratio of these revolutions up higher to the revolutions of this by putting us into higher gear. So first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. Each time we shift gears, this gear will be going slightly faster than its input shaft side. So that's what the transmission does. And obviously when we put it in reverse, then the thing goes the other direction. But what I wanna do is I wanna point out here these two gears. So let's look closely at these. I've got one that's beveled and one that's a straight toothed gear. And then now we're gonna come over here to the transfer case. And I'm gonna set this camera down right here. So when we look inside of the transfer case right now, you'll see that in here there's a spot for that straight tooth gear to insert itself into this space and engage with this gear right here. And on the other side of this gear, when I turn this, we're turning the front yoke, or the, excuse me, the rear differential yoke right here. So I'm turning the yoke from the, that's what's driving the rear drive shaft, okay? This gear always engages with our gear on the transmission, that is that sloped gear. So this gear is always gonna be engaged no matter what we do, this gear is gonna be turning. So now you'll see that in the, in the geared position I'm at right now, we would have our output shaft would be hooked into here and it would be turning our rear drive shaft at the exact same speed as the output shaft of the transmission, okay? And at the same time, the transmission is also going to be turning this gear, which is now fully engaged to the front yoke and so what position we're in right now is we're in four high, so four wheel drive. So the one-to-one -one relationship between the rear drive shaft and the transmission is a straight through one-to-one -one relationship. And this gear set here is geared accordingly so that this front yoke should be turning at roughly the exact same speed as the back yoke. It seems like with four wheel drives, at least in the old days, the front transmission or the front trans the front drive shaft always goes a slightly faster than the rear so that's why you don't want to drive them on dry pavement in four wheel drive high high range so anyway but they should be roughly the same okay so i'm going to make one change on my lever here and sorry for the shaking i have to kind of do it this way so now what i've done is i've moved this gear here back slightly and disengaged it from the gear down inside of there. So now my gear that's connected to my transmission is no longer connected to the gear that's running my front drive shaft. I'm out of four wheel drive at this point. But if we look inside of here, you'll see I've not changed the position of this gear. This would still be fully engaged with my output shaft of my transmission. So now I'm in two wheel drive, high range. Basically, this is turning at the exact same rate as the output shaft of my transmission, but my front end is not engaged. So this gear will be turning because remember, this gear is always attached to the transfer case. But you can see this gear is not turning because right now we've slid this back and disengaged from our inner tooth gear there. And so the front drive shaft is not engaged right now. Okay, so that's two wheel drive, high range now. And if I push this back one more click, what we're gonna do is, and let's see if you can see that well, 
Okay, so watch this gear in here. As I do this next change, that gear is gonna be pushed back slightly, which is gonna disengage our straight tooth gear from the output shaft of the transmission. So now we've effectively disengaged the rear drive shaft. This will still be turning because like I said, this always turns. But you can see I can turn this now and neither of my yokes are turning. I'm not engaged at the front end. I'm not engaged at the back end. I'm in neutral on the transfer case. So this would be where if I was a tractor and I needed to run my power takeoff or something, I'd be engaged into neutral. Vehicle's not gonna move. Nothing's gonna happen. My next change is I'm gonna go down to low range. So again, just a click in here. And what I did this time is I moved this gear back. So when we look inside of our gear here, we can see now that I've pushed this gear way back. And now what's driving the rear yoke here, you can see I am connected to the rear yoke now. But now this bigger gear has to make a revolution for every revolution of the output shaft out of the transmission and that in fact that then turns this smaller gear which turns this gear here and so now it takes a lot of turns of my output shaft to get me a full turn of my drive shaft we're in low range but you can also see at this point I am still not engaged with my front my front drive shaft so I'm in for low I'm actually in low range, I'm not in four low, I'm in kind of too low and have not engaged the front drive shaft. One more click, moves this last little socket thing in there or that push rod. We slid this, this gear back. Now my output ring of my transmission, my output gear is turning this and that's turning this, which is turning this, which is engaged over here and now my front Drive shaft is moving, my rear drive shaft is moving, I'm in four low. And there you go, that's how a transfer case works. So through the, the little bit of slack in my pins, I can actually come back, disengage my front end, keep my rear engaged, and this is what happens when you buy one of those twin stick setups. We replace our single lever with two independent levers that are driving our two pins independently. So it's much, much easier to move into low range with or without engaging the front differential or the front drive shaft or differential, obviously. So again, back one, neutral, this shaft is turning. None of my shafts are, none of my drive shafts are going with it. The next click back, I think I got one too many maybe, nope. There's two wheel drive, okay? This is turning. This is going directly to my rear drive shaft. This turns, but my front drive shaft doesn't. And if I do the final click back, and it's sorry for the shaking, I have to turn a little, there we go. Okay, now we've got four high. So there you go. That's how a transfer case works. All right, rem well, remember when I said I wanted to tap my hole for my breather on my transmission. I'm not sure about the one on the transfer case yet because it looks a little big, but I did pull the top end of the transmission out. So if we look down in here, um, this is the transmission. So lots of gears. I'm not gonna show you how all this works because it's just beyond me to be able to describe it. But basically the, these different gears change ratios when you move your forks back and forth. And then this is the top of the transmission with the forks that I'm just talking about. So these are what you're moving around when you're shifting. So gonna clean all the permatex off this. Now I'm gonna tap that hole and then I'm gonna put this back on before I mess with it. I don't wanna mess with it at all. This is kind of beyond me. So just gonna clean it up, tap that one hole and slap this thing back on. Well, that was pretty uneventful, but there's my new breather in place of that other little dude and I just put a little permatex around the top. There was permatex there to begin with. So what the permatex says you're supposed to do is just kind of hand tighten it down until you just see a little tiny bit coming out all the way around and then you're supposed to let it sit for 24 hours or 12 hours or something like that and then come back and torque everything down. Obviously you can see up here I got a little too much in there. 
But then I've also just gone through and I've scraped out any of the little places that I could see where the primer was showing that I still had a little grease and dirt on here. So I'll clean up those little spots. I'll let this Permatex sit up for the prescribed amount of time. Slap a little more primer on this in preparation for putting it back together. And then see if we can't bolt these two pieces back together and get them ready to go back connected up to the motor. So making good progress. Um, not sure how much further we'll get today as we've got to let that stuff sit for a while now. So I might just let it sit for a while and go do something else. And then I'll come back and tighten them up good, slap a little bit more primer on, let it dry up, and then made them back together. Okay, well, the task I've set myself today is another one of those that's going to be a little stress inducing because it involves heavy lifting with the engine hoist back there, a drop cloth, and some bondage instruments. So <laughs> I cracked myself up.